very good news about Puerto Rico, you guys. Uh, good, good news, bad news kind of situation, but I, I think this is pretty cool news. Um, last week, last week, Puerto Rico went on a general strike. They went on a general strike uh, to protest the control of Puerto Rico's electrical grid uh, by the U.S. slash Canadian company called Luma Energy. So you guys might remember that there was a hurricane that came through, kind of really wrecked their electrical grid, and Puerto Rico has been kind of struggling um, in terms of that for, for since that hurricane. And and there, you know, um, Elon Musk went down there and he did some shit. That was before everybody realized that Elon Musk was a giant tool, uh, because at that point, even I was like, "Holy, that's pretty fucking cool, man!" Like, okay, cool. You seem like a benevolent fucking. Ca- uh, uh, CEO of a corporation. Maybe you understand that, like, yeah, you can't just do evil shit all the time. That you, if, when you have this wealth, you got to kind of do something uh, positive with it. And uh, you know, I, 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 I gave him some praise when praise was due. But you know, he turned out to be a giant monstrous shit hurdle. But uh, so they're 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 protesting. There's a mass general strike, and the unions in Puerto Rico are actually in favor of this. Whereas larger unions in America are not in favor of a general strike. Randy Weingarten, uh, the aforementioned American Federation of Teachers, the AFT, she, when there was a big call for a general strike coming out last year, she basically said, no, 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 we should just let the courts handle it. The courts will do the right thing. When it's like, what? What? You're 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 the president of a fucking union, but she sits on the board of the DNC. And guess what? The Democrats don't like fucking general strikes, because when you have a general strike and when they're successful and we've seen successful ones like in 1934. Um, and I did a whole fucking show about it. There's an hour and 20 some odd minutes of material that I wrote. Uh, it, there's a video about this on my channel. It's called. I think it's called why we need a general strike or something. So if you want to see that whole show, that that whole show is there for you guys on the rock fins, on the YouTubes, on the odysseys. Um, but basically in 1934, there were a series of major general strikes and they won. They tried to use violence. Well, the socialists fought back. They tried to smear them in the media. Well, people didn't really buy it because they were watching what was going on in their streets. Um, so eventually that led to FDR approving the Wagner Act, which legitimized unions. It gave them more power. It gave them the ability to collectively bargain. And minimum wage went up during the Great Depression. P- minimum wage went up significantly to help the lives of the American worker. And that was that that way for about a decade, right? And then the war happened. And then after the war, there was a big fear. There was a big fear that the working class was going to get empowered again. And they would like, you know, get basic needs covered and shit. So the Taft-Hartley Act was written, and another Democrat by the name of Harry Truman, who was a high school dropout, uh, became president because FDR died, and he didn't really want the job. He's responsible for dropping two nuclear bombs in Japan, also gutting the working class. Uh, So this guy's just all around a piece of shit. Uh, And he he approved it. He He sided with Republicans, and he approved it. And that's what killed the unions. That's what killed the ability to strike. That's what killed organized labor in America. Um, And and that's also why you see like corporate corporate unions like the AFL, which the AFL has a history of being garbage as a union. Uh, They were racist, sexist. They only wanted to like uh, represent white tradesmen. And IWW was like, hey, that's foolish. And you're going to you're going to kind of kill the labor movement this way. Uh, and and they did. They shot themselves in the foot. The police unions are not on our side. All of these unions don't do what unions are supposed to do. They they do what state departments want them to do. They they parrot the narratives of the state department. Uh, they parrot the narratives of the Democratic Party, and they suppress workers. They don't collectively bargain on their behalf, and that comes from the Taft Harley Act. So in America, these unions uh, don't actually do what unions are supposed to do. Um, they they're they're basically trying to sheep herd the working class into the Democratic Party. But in Puerto Rico, the unions are like, fucking yeah, man. <laughs> Let's do this. This is awesome, you know. So uh 
So that's awesome. And, and look, the part of the thing is like, I know there might be some people watching that are like, hey, what's wrong with a, an American and a Can uh, American slash Canadian company going down there to help them with their electrical grid? Uh, and the electrical grid before in Puerto Rico was state was was state run. It was it was run by the government of Puerto Rico. It was a it was a public utility. Uh, and because because of, you know, relief efforts and this, that and the third, they kind of lost control of their public utility. And now it's become privatized. And we saw what happens when the uh, electrical grid is privatized. We saw what happened in February in Texas. That whole state got wrecked. That whole state got wrecked because what are what are private companies interested in? Are they interested in providing electricity in the most efficient and cost effective and environmentally friendly manner? Absolutely fucking not. They are interested in making fucking money. And that's what they did in Texas. The grid got overloaded. They didn't have safety or, or any sort of backups. And that whole state was in turmoil. People, And then they were still charging people. And that's what that's what happened here, right? Like that's what happened in Puerto Rico too. Um, and you know that it's not like if people can't pay or their grid goes down again, it, you know, it. it I, hope, I hope this doesn't happen, but let's say there was another natural disaster and the grid goes down, you know that people are still going. It's going to be the Texas situation all over again because, and it's going to be even worse because guess what? Puerto Rico is full of brown people. And guess what America doesn't give a shit about? Black and brown people and indigenous people and women and LGBT. Anything that's a minority, America doesn't give a fuck about. Anyone that's a minority. And Puerto Rico counts for that. So you really think that America, if, if something goes wrong, is going to be like, oh man, we have, a, we have our own private corporation down there. We should go help these people and see how we can help Luma Energy or whatever. No, they're going to be like, okay, how do we bail out Luma Energy Fuck Puerto Rico. How do we bail out Luma Energy? There's a lot of problems with Luma itself, too. Um, their app doesn't have a, a Spanish-speaking function, which is just a dick move, which, again, goes into, like, yeah, corp corporations help with colonization because when they come and take over, they don't, they don't, you know, put their apps or their websites or any of their, any of their fucking um uh advertising or what have yous in the native language of the country that they're going in to take over the utility or whatever so this is just all part of the colonial thing right uh forcefully make them assimilate into english well puerto rico is, doesn't speak english that's not its main language i mean people in puerto rico probably speak english but that's not its main language so they don't have a spanish option and then their price differences became astronomical. So check this out. Uh, before, Luma was about $117 a month uh, for electricity. And then it went to $669 after Luma took over. Why? It's, it's not like the people completely changed the way that they were running their electricity. It's not like they were like, oh, well, the Americans are here. Flip on all the things and let's run the AC nonstop. Let's go crazy with it. No, they were, they probably drain the thing the same way they run the thing all the time so that their electrical bill isn't, you, you know, crazy different all the time. It's the same consistent thing so that they can budget properly for it. it that's a seven time jump in price. You don't really see that too often, except when you have deregulated corporate interests. When corporations are completely deregulated and there's no rules, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can price gouge you day in and day out. And they'll say, well, supply and demand, baby, supply and demand. Yeah, well, you're not doing that supply and demand properly. There is a demand for it, and there's also an overwhelming amount of supply. So why would you spike up the charge for the supply as if it's going to run out? 
So this creates, a, and then this creates this creates a scarcity mentality because then people go, oh wait, are the prices going up because there there there's 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 not enough power to go around, or did they have to you know ration out the power? What's going on? No, just a corporation that wants more money than the uh, than than you know the, uh, a, a nation has. Puerto Rico's finances, too, are not controlled by Puerto Rico. They're controlled by uh, an oversight board that is connected to the United States. So all of this stuff goes back to the United States is controlling the finances in Puerto Rico and the energy grid in Puerto Rico. Um, and they're not going to help them if something go they're going to try to bail their own corporations out and get them out of Puerto Rico. So really what this strike is, this strike that's happening in Puerto Rico it's a pushback against colonialism. It's a general strike against U.S. colonialism. Puerto Rico should be its own state. And the reason why Puerto Rico is in financial turmoil now is a little bit partly due to the hurricane, due to due to natural disasters, which I, you can't really hold that against them, uh, you know, uh, but it's also because of U.S. interference. It's also because of colonial interference. It's also because of imperialism. And the countries that enact imperialism and fuck up a country's another country's economics, yeah, you should pay for that. That is wrong. And these strikes are showing that. So really, if you want to help Puerto Rico get back up on its feet, America should give Puerto Rico the financial aid that it needs because America is partly responsible for putting Puerto Rico in that financial uh, bind so to speak. All right. Let me look at your comments real quick. We'll look quiet over on Odyssey. We got to get those comments going over on Odyssey. Ba -ba -ba -ba, we're... A dingo ate me baby uh, says, yeah, Randy is a shit lib DNC tool. Yeah, she sits on she sits on the board, I believe, of the DNC. So it totally makes sense that she would she would be that way. Uh, dingo ate me baby also says many union and organizers were socialist, communist and McCarthyism helped uh, and and labor suffered. That, that's another good point. That's another good point. And we kind of see that sort of stuff happening again today. Um, we, we, we see how McCarthyism pushes, you know, it basically kills any sort of organization. Uh, there are people that claim that the Black Lives Matter movement is a Russian in infiltration plant to destabilize America, as if America ne has never been racist ever, right? Like, <laughs> it just completely ignores that. McCarthyism is, I, I would argue to say McCarthyism might be the best propaganda tool that's that's ever been invented um yeah i i would i would say it's the bad that that idea might need a little bit more exploring um but i i i would say mccarthyism is 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 pretty solid it's pretty up there uh you know to create this fictionalized enemy that no matter how whatever uh problems there are whatever the problem is if 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 it if it comes down to being like, oh, this is a capitalism problem, uh-uh, this weird enemy we invented that happens to be Russia is the problem. Like, it is, and and you're right, it, you know, that McCarthyism, any sort of union that that uh, lined itself up with socialist or communist ideologies were immediately seen as a threat. So, you know, what are you going to do? You, you, you can't outwardly be um, a, a, a socialist or a communist or else you'll be seen as a traitor to the country. Um you know the the Rosenbergs were 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 killed because of that. That's that's a story. I think I'm I'm gonna probably cover that tomorrow because I I do want to talk about Ethel Rosenberg a little bit more. Um, Zozovix, uh, fucking money is the fucking money is the best money. It multiplies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, Holly says IWW didn't sign contracts. Uh, they felt contracts were exploitation. Yeah, it's all legalese. You, you, you either have the job or you don't. And, you know, don't be stupid. I feel like, um, you know, what, what, what more do you need? I feel like every time I read a contract for work, I'm always looking for ways that I'm going to get fucked. 
Whereas if there wasn't a contract and it was just all upfront and, and open and honest, we, we don't, we wouldn't have to worry about this sort of shit. Uh, Holly says we will not comply. Absolutely. Um, Ollie also says people died in heat and no refrigeration for medicine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that happened in Puerto Rico as well. You know, you, you, I think everybody focused on the fact that Trump went down there and threw some fucking paper towels, uh, to, to people that were like, no, we need food. And he was like, boom, paper towel. Lee, Lee camp has a great joke about that. Uh, that whole thing. It, but you know, no one really focused on the real problem. they, they just concentrated on the uh, the whole paper towel thing, and that became that became headline news. Which is like, really, that's the fucking headline. That's fucking crazy. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button, and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.